Thank you very much, and uh, thanks to Chairman Latta and Ranking Member Matsui for convening today's hearing to discuss the many important topics under the FCC's jurisdiction, and thank you uh, to Chairwoman Rosenmorsel and the commissioners um, for being here and answering these questions today. This has been a very useful hearing so far, and, um, and I really want to continue uh, on some of the topics that we've touched on and that we've touched on in our prior hearings. Um, in the last committee hearing we had last week, I talked about the importance of uh, reliable emergency communications for all of the diverse communities in my district. And I really wanna continue that conversation with you all today because I think it's critically important. Um, there are more than 140 languages spoken in my district and in the Houston um, area in Harris and Fort Bend counties. Um, in one neighborhood in my district alone, the Gulfton neighborhood, there are more than 50 languages spoken. Um, and unfortunately, last month, there was a critical uh, incident. There was a shelter in place issued uh, in our district. And unfortunately, many of the members of the community couldn't, uh, didn't get the emergency alerts, didn't get, um, didn't even know about this chemical fire uh, in the area um, or know to shelter in place because the wireless emergency alerts in the city of Houston's um, subscription-based alert system are available only in English and Spanish. Um, I know uh, and was very pleased to see that the FCC has adopted a notice of proposed rulemaking in April and is engaged in that process uh, to require wireless providers to translate alerts into the 13 most commonly spoken languages in the United States. Um, and Chairman Rosenworcel, I know and understand that as part of the, this notice that you sent letters um, to the nine largest providers of WEAs requesting information on how alerts can offer more multilingual access. And of course, we have visited um, about how you're looking to those who have done it successfully um, to figure out how we can implement effective programs. So can you share some of the information you've learned, some of the challenges that you see that are out there, and some of the ways that we on this committee and in the Congress can help uh, give you the tools you need to address this critical issue? Sure, wireless emergency alerts have extraordinary potential. All of us have those devices in our palm, our pocket, or purse at any time. So when they buzz with emergency information, we can act on it. Right now they're sent out in English and Spanish. But as you mentioned, there are a lot of people who might not get the information they need because it's not in a language they understand. So we've done a few things. As you mentioned, I've written to the largest wireless providers and asked about this technology and what changes might need to be made. I reached out to the New York Attorney General who's been working with us because the New York Emergency Management Department actually has some protocols to get it out in 13 languages. And then we started a rulemaking. So my hope is we're gonna get a robust record and we're gonna figure out how to move forward, make these available to more people in more languages. But over time, we might also need assistance from you because FEMA runs the integrated uh, system that helps send out these messages and I wanna make sure we're all working and rowing in the same direction. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, in um, it, it, one of the issues that that raises, you mentioned FEMA, and I know that uh, one of the challenges that you noted in response to the letter we sent back in February is that there are more than 1,600 federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial governments that are responsible for these alerts as well in, in coordination with and, and at times working um, at times working with FEMA, at times obviously working on their own, um, and that these generally are, are usually just in English and Spanish. Um, I know that you have provided guidance to these entities um, in sending non-English and non-Spanish alerts, um, but I'm wondering, again, sort of what we can do that's helpful and whether the FCC has the authority it needs to address um, the alerts through the rulemaking, whether there are additional authorities that you need or what the things, um, what things Congress can do really to help also support these entities and ensure that they have the resources to send out the alerts in languages other than English and Spanish uh, to those who need it? Those are all the right questions. They're the ones that we've asked in our rulemaking. And as soon as we get comments in, I'd be happy to make sure that my staff sits down with yours and identifies uh, pathways forward and what might take additional congressional action. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for that. I appreciate your work on this issue um, and just want to stress that it's of great importance uh, to me and my communities, I know as it is to my colleagues um, here on this committee. So um, because I typically uh, run overtime, I'm going to yield back with some time left. I thank you. Uh, Y'all have covered my other questions I had prepared. So I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. 